What's up guys, it's Paralyzer here. Today we're going to be doing another tier list, but this time I'm going to be ranking all of the different grounded updates. This is something I've never done before, and I just kind of thought of doing it with 1.4 around the corner. I can predict where I think 1.4 is going to be on this list, and we're going to rank all of the updates that have happened in the past, starting from the original version of the game all the way until now. I have ordered these in the order they were released. These are just the major updates to the game. So 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, not including all of the different bug fix um, in between. I'll be taking into account what was added in the update, like creatures, changes made to new items, new furniture, as well as changes to mechanics and how long it took to release the update. Now, the first update we have here is, is the first version of Grounded. Um, obviously we don't know how long this took to release, but roughly it was two years in the making from what I've been told to get the original release of Grounded out there. This is the very early access version. I'm just going to put it in S tier because it's the first version of Grounded. I think everyone enjoys the very first version whenever they played it. They had a great time. That's why we're all still, well, that's why a lot of us are still here today. I know not everyone has played the original Grounded, but, um, you know, the original garnered a lot of attention and a lot of players, and you can't put it anywhere but S tier. There's just from nothing to a game. Like, there's nothing to compare it to, and I think it's an amazing version of the game. So, yeah, I'm going to have to put it in S tier. Next, we have version 0.2 of the game, and this was released 29 days after the original version of Grounded, so the early access release. And this included the crow and the water flea, as well as sprig fence, acorn fence, grass tables, and clover tables. 30 days, pretty quick turnaround time. The crow, somewhat useful, you can get crow feathers. The water flea, also a little bit useful. Is it a crazy cool update? Not really. I'm going to put it in B. Didn't take that long to make. Added a couple of cool things. I do like the crow, it's a cool feature in the backyard. A few extra furniture items as well. Is pretty nice. 29 days, it's a fast turnaround. No complaints from me. Next, we have version 0.3 of the game, which was released 35 days after 0.2, which is the version we just ranked. And this is what it includes zip lines, spinning wheels, and signs. Now, spinning wheels obviously is going to help with reducing time to craft things like crude rope, which at the time was called woven fiber. And zip lines are just useful for getting around the yard. But it's not really that much to add in one update, to be honest. The, probably the hardest part about this is getting the zip lines to work properly. 35 days for this update, I'm going to put it in C tier. Um, the only real notable thing here is zip lines, so not really that crazy of an update. Speaking of crazy updates, next we have point four. This was released 41 days after the point three update and includes the koi fish, diving bell spiders, tadpoles, water boatmans, Koi Armor, Bubble Helmet, Fin Flops, Gill Tube, Slime Lantern, Bone Trident, Bone Dagger, Peblet Dagger, Buoyant Foundation. I think this is an A tier update. This is basically the pond update. Didn't officially have a name, I don't believe, the point 0.4 update, but it is the pond update, is what I would call it. Um, I'd say this is an A tier update. I'm not a huge fan of the pond myself. I just don't like having limited time underwater, but... I can admit that this area is very cool, takes a lot of development, and it added a bunch of new creatures, including the koi fish, which to this day is a very, very cool enemy. And um, in my opinion, just one of the cool areas in the yard, which when you look at the 0.1 version of it compared to the 0.4 version, it's two completely different places. So it's got to be in A tier for me. The next update is 0.5. This is 35 days after the release of 0.4, the pond update. And this one includes Finfops Plus, Diving Lantern Plus, Algae and Muscle Sprouts, the pond gets a revamp as well as Underwater Caves and Smoothie Plus, which I'm assuming is smoothies using the Muscle Sprouts. This is going to be a C tier update. There's not a crazy amount in here. This is kind of just, uh, we added a bunch of stuff and we're going to rework a bunch of the stuff we already added. It's a few cool things, but it's nothing too crazy. A lot of the time here was probably spent reworking all of the pond, which isn't something you'd massively notice unless you've played 0.4, which maybe we'll have to go back to at some point. Next, we have version 0.6, which was 44 days after the release of 0.5. And this includes mosquitoes, fireflies and bees, as well as the bee armor, firefly headlamp, stinger spear, mosquito needle, weevil shield, stuffed bee, stuffed firefly. Although I've played point one and the stuffed B is already in point one, so that can't be true. Maybe it means B trophy, because I know the stuffed B is in the game since its initial release, unless maybe you couldn't unlock it until then. I don't know. Either way, 
Is this a good update? Yeah, I'm going to put this in B tier alongside the crow. This update adds a couple of cool things, don't get me wrong. The bees, pretty cool. Mosquitoes, fireflies, pretty cool. They're annoying, don't get me wrong, but they're a cool addition. Three new flying creatures to the game. I always love a good creature addition, so I'm going to put this one in B tier. Next, we have 0.7. This is 28 days after the release of 0.6, so very quickly after. And this one includes Sprig Railing, Acorn Railing, Acorn Spirals. As, okay, it includes a bunch of building stuff. I'm not going to go through every single one of them, as well as a bunch of trophies. And it also includes Shinobi Sneeze. Ew. But the other thing this includes, as you can see from the image, is relocating and crafting from nearby storage. Hot take, this is S tier. Crafting from nearby storage is probably one of Grounded's greatest features. I've only seen it in a couple of other survival games, like Terraria, and it is simply one of the best features in the game, including relocating chests and stuff like that, and just relocating stuff in general. I know in this version, I don't think you could relocate buildings. I think you had to wait until later in the game to be able to do that, but I think you could just relocate workstations and stuff. Um, yeah, hot take, crafting from nearby storage, one of the best features in Grounded, and for that reason, this is an S tier update, only 28 days after the previous update, so a very quick turnaround time there. Even if it didn't add much in terms of creatures, this is feature alone is just the best feature ever added to Grounded. Next, we have the point 0.8 update. Now, what's included in point 0.8, you ask? That's a, a great question I'm about to tell you. So the point 0.8 update is 33 days after the previous update. It includes door frame, triangular stem wall, inverted triangular stem wall. Very useless. Photo mode, cool. Password multiplayer, so you can put a password on your multiplayer games. Beefy smoothies to replace the Smoothie Plus, so they just changed the name of it. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, this update, bit stinky. The photo mode is cool and all, and I do use it a lot to take thumbnails, but for the average player, a lot of this stuff is pretty useless stuff. It was only 33 days after the last update, so not a huge deal, but I'm just gonna say it's a bit of a mid-update, not that good, and for that reason it's D, it's probably one of the worst updates on this list. Next, we have version 0.9. Now, what was added in that is 27 days after the previous update. It includes ladders, curved walls, curved floors, all sorts of curved stuff. You get creative mode with bugs, and you can now cancel your attacks during the animation. B tier. There's not much in this update at all. Like, basically nothing. But just the ability to cancel your attacks while you're mid-animation basically revolutionizes Grounded, and from this point onward, Grounded gets a lot easier in terms of playing, because you can block while you're mid-combo. Before this version of the game, if you started attacking, you weren't able to block during your combo. You had to wait until your attack animation finished, which was annoying. It's like using a staff 24-7 in the game. Not fun, basically. That one feature moves this from a D tier to a B tier update, if it wasn't for that one feature, it'd be a D tier update. Not a great one. But there's a reason that both of these two updates have been a bit lackluster, and that's to prepare for this next update, Shroom and Doom. The first update with an official title to it, Shroom and Doom is version 0.10, and was 65 days after the release of the previous update. This update includes the Broodmother, Ark Ars, the Pet Weevil and Aphid, the Mask of the Mother Demon, and Club of the Mother Demon, the Crow Crossbow, a bunch of building stuff with the mushrooms and a bunch of other stuff as well, as well as mushroom slurry, plant slurry, and you can now sit in chairs. They included the haze lab finally. There's two new mutations. There's achievements in the game. This is the S tier update. This is one of the biggest updates in the history of Grounded, I would say. Um, this just added so much stuff in the space of two months, like a 65 day gap to add all of this stuff. is probably the biggest update they've ever done. Probably the best update they've ever done as well. Yeah, this is just, this is the update, basically. You you had to be there. Adding the first ever boss to Grounded. Adding the first pets to Grounded. Adding some of the best weapons ever introduced into Grounded. Simply the best. Um, adding achievements to the game. This is S tier. It is just the update. Simple as that. No questions asked. Next, we have the Hot and Hazy update. At this point, they'd started naming the updates, and they've also decided that they're going to do them less frequently to pump out more content in those updates. So this is 112 days after the previous update, which is about four months. 
and what is included in the update. We have infected ladybugs, infected lava, infected gnats, black worker ants, black soldier ants, sickly roly poly, ant lion, meaty gnat assistant manager, so another boss, and a lot of new stuff. A bunch of new armor like ant lion armor, roly poly, crusty roly poly, not roly poly, just the crusty roly poly armor, um, black ant armor, all the black ant weapons and tools, a bunch of different types of arrows. The smithing station was introduced in this version, which means you can finally upgrade your weapons. Oh my god. Quartzite, obviously, so that you can upgrade them. Well, Quartzite was already in the game, but I guess the glob version of it and crafting it to be able to use it to upgrade your stuff. The sand blocks, the black ant hill, the trash heap, the picnic table, the haze was revamped, they have sticky smoothies, milk molars and mega milk molars were added to the game. Okay, yeah, I don't need to say much more. This is just another S tier update. How does Grounded have so many amazing updates? This thing literally has all of the best stuff in the game. They added another like seven or eight mutations on top of that. I'm not going to name everything as much as I could. Yeah, one of the greatest updates to ever grace the game yet again. Hot and hazy has to be S tier. It just does. Next we have Into the Woods, which is 104 days after the release of Hot and Hazy, which is about three and a half months. This includes the wood pile, basically. It has Termite, Termite Soldier, and then it has a bit of the upper yard as well with Ladybird Lava, Ladybirds, Black Ox Beetles, Roly Polies, Green Shield Bugs, Dust Mites, Scarabs, Infected Wolf Spider, scary, and the Termite King. It gives us tier three tools, uh, the Coltana was added, Burr Floors were added, a couple of new meals, the Peeper to be able to place waypoints. There's a bunch of new stuff. The Surveyor Scanner was added in this version as well. I'm going to put this in A. I don't think it's quite an S tier update. It's not as memorable in my opinion, but it is still a very, very good update. And for that reason, I am going to put it in the A tier of updates. Amazing update, just not quite on the level of the Shroom and Doom and the Hot and Hazy, I don't think. Next, we have the Bugs Strike Back. Now, at this point, this is where I had come back to the game. Um, to play it was just before this update released and this is when I started fully officially covering Grounded on my channel. Doesn't mean I didn't play these versions of the game, I did play the original release but I took a bit of a break in between um, so ranking these updates mostly is based on feel and vibe and everyone else's opinion, as well as like what's actually in them. Whereas now this is like I've played these as they've been releasing. Bug Strike Back was 98 days after Into the Woods. Um, which is, you know, three months, give or take. This included, let's have a look, Charcoal Canteen, the Charcoal Torch, the Waft Emitter, the Turrets, the Explosive Burr Traps, Faction Reactivity, ew, Mixers, Creature Cards, Upgrading Armor for the first time, Enemies now have Weak Points, the ASL, and the ability to name Chests. I'm going to put this in B tier, I think. Mm, no, I'm going to put this in A tier. I really like the mixers. The faction reactivity does annoy me a bit. I'm not going to lie, but the mixers are cool. I love the creature cards. I love going for gold cards. I love peeping creatures. I love the um, waft emitter. I love a lot of the stuff added in this version. The charcoal torch is amazing. Not a fan of the charcoal canteen. There isn't any new bugs here, but I just think this version of the game adds a new dynamic. The mixers are a really fun twist on the game, and I just love them. I always have. So for that reason, it's got to be an A tier update. Next up, we have the home stretch update, which is 107 days after the bug strike back. Now, this update is interesting. It adds the pet gnat, the cookery, the rotten meat slurry, and shared worlds. I'm going to be honest, this is one of the most underwhelming updates in the game's history, but... But, 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 there's a reason, and that's because they were preparing 1.0. They should have just never released the home stretch, and they should have just included it in the 1.0 update, but I think they released this early so that they could test their shared worlds feature and then allow people to use the shared worlds and get it working so they could fix it all up in time for 1.0 is the general gist of what I get from this update. Um, yeah, not my favourite update in the world. It doesn't really add much to the game. However... We next have 1.0, only 33 days after the home stretch, so very soon after, which is why I said could have just combined the two. Um, yeah, might be potentially the best update ever released in the history of Grounded, the full release, which is to be expected because they'd been working on it for a long, long time, you know? It's only 33 days after the last update, but it's been worked on since the initial release, which is two years and one month before the release of 1.0. So this included the Mantis, Moth, Spiny Waterfly, Tiger Mosquito, Tick, Fire Ant Worker, Fire Soldier, and Black Widow, Black Widow Lings, Mant, Director Schmachter, 50 million weapons, 50 million different building items, um, flares, 
Ew, flares. Trinkets, a full story with an ending, six new mutations, Cortana unlock event, super mixers. It's just the best. It's the best. It's the best in the game. Um, yeah, it's it's S tier. It's probably my favourite update to date. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. Absolute S tier. Next, we have 1.1, a holiday treat, 72 days later. This included an absolute crapload of new building items. This also increased your inventory by 10 slots, gave you three like hot pouches on your hotbar, includes the zipper and the mutation weapon revamp. I am going to say this is a B tier update. It's pretty decent. It's a lot of new stuff if you're a builder, which is very, very cool. And I also love the additional 10 inventory slots, although you could do this previously using the pet bug by trapping your own pet and then using it to give you an extra 10 inventory slots. But we'll just ignore that and pretend like they just gave us 10 new ones and didn't just fix that bug uh, as an excuse. The zipper, also very cool and a lovely feature in the game. So for that reason, it's a B tier update. Next, we have the Super Duper update, 138 days after Holiday Treat, which is almost five months. It's a long time. We got the Handy Nat, we got the Wasp Queen, Wasp Drone, and Infected Broodmother, although the Infected Broodmother was released a couple of updates later, but I'm just going to include it in this one. Um, it was like include, it was added like a week after, so it's, it's in this update. Bard's Tudor and all the wasp armor and stuff, all the um, moldy matriarch stuff, obviously, and a full set of broodmother armor. 10 trillion different building items. This was like the builder's update, basically. Um, I'm going to add this as an A tier. I don't think it's quite on the level of 1.0, Shroom and Doom, Hot and Hazy, but I do think that it's an amazing update, one of my favourite updates, and one of the most significant updates, I would say, for this channel, because I was able to cover it right as it released, and I just remember staying up until, like, 1am playing it when it released, and then waking up at 6am the next morning, so that I could play it as soon as I woke up and make as much content as possible. I loved this update, it was so much fun. For that reason, I'm going to put it in A tier. Next, we have the 1.3 Make It and Break It update. Now, I haven't, like, I haven't updated my um, spreadsheet to include what was in this update. This includes Playgrounds mode with a bunch of different mechanics and custom maps. Now, a lot of people would put this in D tier. A lot of people hate this and, ooh, I don't like Playgrounds. It was a waste of an update. Where, where, where? They did do a lot of stuff in survival in this as well. Like, you can do raids using the waft emitter with a bunch more creatures in this update. You need all the gold cards for 100%, which quite a lot of people hate. I actually quite like it. I also think you should need all mutations, which you don't for some reason. I'm going to say it's a B tier update. Listen, a lot of people hate this update. I personally quite liked it. I thought it had a lot of potential, but unfortunately, it's not quite worked. I think we can all admit it didn't work. Um, people don't seem to like Playgrounds, unfortunately. I don't like posting videos on Playgrounds purely because I know most people don't want to watch them. It is what it is. It's going to go in B tier. I'm not a huge hater of it, though. The biggest problem is the search system. There needs to be an upvote, downvote system. Currently, some of the highest downloaded maps are absolutely crap. They are rubbish. I hate to break it to the people who have some really high downloaded maps. Some of them are terrible. There should be an upvote and downvote system, and you should be able to sort by the ones that have, like, the most upvotes, because that would just make so much more sense to get rid of all the rubbish ones that just have clickbait titles. And then finally, we have the 1.4 update. Obviously, people will tell you in the comments, he knows what's in the update, he's seen it ahead. I know nothing. All I know is what everyone else knows, which is that we have an Ant Queen, the Ant Scepter, and the Mint Sword, as well as predicting other stuff like Jewel Wheel Daggers that I'm theorizing might be in there based off a few things we've seen, but there's no guarantee. I am going to predict that this update will be A tier. I think it's hard to live up to an S tier update. I think it's very difficult to pull off something like one of these updates. If they do do it, it wouldn't surprise me. It's been a long time. This is the most time they've had to work on an update since Make It and Break It, which kind of almost alone makes me want to put it into S, but I'm going to put it in A. We keep the expectations low, you know? Only the second highest tier on the tier list. Not very high expectations whatsoever. This update has to be huge. It has to be really good. It has to bring back all of the survival players because a lot of them left in 1.3. Um, it's been like over a year since a survival update to Grounded, basically, at this point. This has to be an amazing update. 
like the last the super duper update was april 25th 2023 this update is april 16th so it, it will literally be a full year since we had a survival update this better be amazing i have very high expectations i'm going to put it in a tier although i really should be putting it in s tier because it should be an s tier update but we will have to wait and see that is my ranking of the updates in Grounded. Let me know if you agree or disagree. I know a lot of people would put 1.3 in D tier. It's a very controversial um, place to put it for myself. But, but thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, leave a like on the video. And I'll see you all in the next Grounded video. Have a great rest of your day.